Hey everybody, APP Wargamer here. I've been um, uh, building bugs and painting all all night, uh, and I decided to kind of show off what I've been working on. So I've been building some bugs. Um, I got a bunch of used Terranids, and I've been painting them up and converting them. So I want to show you what I've been up to. First, I'll start with some pyrovores. These are pyrovores that I bought from my local store. Um, I bought them as new, and they were really cool to build and I'm about halfway done painting them. But anyways, these guys um, were really cool in a game that I used um, used them for not too long ago. And I was introduced to those uh, those awesome guys from a fellow at my local gaming club. He let me borrow some of his, and I was so impressed I had to buy some of my own. Then I was going through my bits box the same night uh, as I was building those, and I built my own Pyrovore. Um, this top piece right here I think is from a Venom Throat. I got it in a bits box um, at my local game store. And the rest of this was stuff I already had. Uh, this is tail piece is from a second edition Lictor. Um, those legs are from Plastic Terranid Warriors. Uh, these are Rending Claws from the Terranid Warrior kit. The head is from a Hive Tyrant from second edition. Uh, these are Gene Stealer Scything Talons. This piece right here is off of, I believe, one of the hands that you use for a Tyranid Warrior that connects to the guns. This is, of course, the Venom Cannon right there. And this piece right here and the chest was mushed together with some putty. And then his belly was a piece of, um, I think it was like a Carnifex head. I, I ripped off the neck of the Carnifex head and that's what I had left. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's a little goofy looking. But, you know, when I put it on the table, it blends right in with those guys, so it looks great. Uh, and then I also had, I think this is a third or fourth edition um, Hive Tyrant. And first, I was thinking of putting wings on them, but I found this guy used. So I decided to try magnetizing some of my Terranids for the first time. So I got some, some magnetized Scything Talons and devourers now these devourers are just the devourers from the uh, termagant kits um, and the termagants um, their hands only point one way so what i did is i just dripped some glue on that side to kind of cover up the fingers so it looks more like a, a left hand so um, i magnetized all four of those limbs so that this guy can be my um, diversified hive tyrant and I magnetized this guy to be the same. So I, I can put, you know, a bunch of devourers on there or take those off and put other things. And so what I did to convert this one was I ripped off the wings because this was already pre-built. So I ripped them off by hand and then I just put in some plastic glue. And my favorite kind of plastic glue is the stuff they use for um, model car kits from testers. And that's that's typically what I like to use for my uh, for my kits. Let me grab. I like the toxic stuff. The stuff is really good for melting plastic. Um, it just really welds your models together. It will warp your bases if you use this to cover your base with with um, flocking. So I I've, I've moved on to um, to just you know white glue for that. But um, this is like my, my favorite glue. Um, my second favorite is just the you know the army painter glue. This this works great, but this stuff's way more toxic, so it melts it, which I like. Um, so I I melted that one into place, and then this one um, I did the same thing too. And you can see it's a little fuzzy looking right there. That's because um, I also melted it with a soldering iron. If you use a soldering iron to uh, melt models, just be ready for some nasty smelling plastic. Um, you probably shouldn't be breathing that in, so definitely ventilate your area. But I use this to route out um, these holes for the um, for the magnets, because uh, I, well, for one, I was too lazy to go get my drill, but also I didn't want to slip with the drill. And this was actually way easier to do, because I could kind of mush it around and then shove the magnet in there. And so um, the method I, that I used, was I took my magnet, 
I'll show an example here. Um, all right, so I took my magnet. Just one of these, okay? And once I figured out the polarity of which side this would click to, I clicked it on to an arm that I had pre-built. And then um, I lined it up, I routed up that hole, stuck it in there, and then kind of swiped this off while it was inside the body. And then I just dumped uh, Zappa Gap glue all over it. This is like super glue. I dumped Zappa Gap all over that stuff and then um, put a little baking soda on it to have it kind of harden up quicker. So that's that was my technique of getting those in there without getting glue all over my fingers. Um, worked really well, actually. And again, that fuzzy area, that was more Zappa Gap that I put on there to kind of harden it. Because I got two other winged hive tyrants that the wings are up and I wanted a little bit more of a dynamic pose. So that's what I did with that guy. Um, yeah. Now I'll show you some of the other models I got. This guy was already pre-built, but I ripped him off the base. Did my own base decorating. The thing that I don't like about the Carnifex models is they're hunched over so extremely. Like it looks great and all, but he's le so top heavy leaning forward. I wanted him to kind of lean up so you can see his face. Because this is old one eye, I really wanted to really get a good look at his face when he's on the tabletop. So I made him a little step there and uh, yeah, just changed, changed up the base. That uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Well, oh, <laughs> uh, a friend of mine gave me this. Here's the uh, the Patriarch Stitch. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was really proud of this model and was asking me to paint it up. And I wasn't sure if I was going to get around to it. And the more I looked at it, I was like, you know, it is pretty funny having the Stitch head on there. And uh, I've got plenty of other Patriarchs, so... This guy is is a just for fun patriarch model, so I'm painting him up too. Um, so that that was a fun conversion. Uh, let's see other things. Oh, here's a project. I I really like the Parasite of Mortex um, from a couple editions ago, and I'm thinking of turning this into a Parasite of Mortex. I've got the Red Terror head. These arms are off of uh, a Trigon. Uh, there's the scything talons that come with the uh, red terror, but I like this kind of base. This this piece right here is from a uh, bio titan in epic scale, so I could probably put that on there and add some wings, and then he'd look like almost like a hornet flying around like that. So he's he's been in my bit box for a while, but I've I picked up an extra one of these out of a bit sale, and I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, for those of you wondering what this guy is, this is a, um, a patriarch that I gave a bone sword to and a banner and a base, um, back in the mid nineties. Um, and it's all right. I can paint a lot better than that now, but I'm thinking of keeping it around just for fun. Um, cause I'd probably never use that model again. So anyways, that's what I've been up to. That's what I've been painting. Uh, hope your projects are going well too. And I'll see you at the next video.